Hi. Okay, in this video I want to take the ideas that we had from the previous one about images and and just move it one little step further. So if, if you remember at some point, I think we probably had an example that looked something like this. Very basic idea of two bubble objects. Uh, the bubble objects have some functions like ascend, which makes them float up, uh, display, which draws them as circles, and top, which I guess stops them at the top. So if I were to run this program again, we can see we have these two bubbles floating up to the top. We have a bubble class. The cl each bubble has an X and a Y diameter, blah, blah, blah. So the, <laughs> the point of what I want to talk about here in this video is how do we take something like this but instead of drawing these shapes, have the bubbles be an image, perhaps an image of a nice flower. So this time I learned my lesson from the last video, and if I go to the data folder in here, I can see that I have an image of a flower. So I want this flower to appear instead of those circles. This isn't actually that difficult of a problem to solve, but let's do it together, uh, step by step, and just see how this works, and uh, then you can kind of take it and do a little bit more with it afterwards. Okay, so um, the first thing we know we need to do is make a p image variable. I'm going to call it flower. Then in setup, I want to load an image, and I have the path to my flower. So now I have a global variable called flower. That flower can be used anytime, anywhere I want. It can be displayed on the screen. I can, for example, just draw it, image, flower, zero, zero. So now I run this program, and we can see the flower is back there, and the bubbles are floating in front of it. I can do one thing I might do is say uh, image mode, just to emphasize this, center, and then draw the flower in the uh, middle of the screen. And we can see now I have the flower in the middle. This again is just using an image kind of as a static background, which is probably a little bit less interesting than, uh, than actually having it be this uh, sprite, if you will, this, um, this, this, this replacement for a shape that we may animate, rotate, change its color, et cetera. So let's think about it now. I don't want to display the image here. Where do I want to display it? I want the image to draw itself for each bubble. Well, each bubble has a display function. Each bubble has a display function. If each bubble has a display function, this is where I need to go in and start changing my code. What do I do for the bubble? I draw an ellipse. Now what do I want to do? I want to draw an image. I want to draw, and, I, and here I want to keep that image mode center, and I want to draw the flower at x, y. Let's run this now, and look. I've got a flower floating up. Oh, I got some sad things going on. Number one, you can see the sort of rectangular edges, even though it's white. This is what I was mentioning. Maybe it would have been better if I had downloaded a PNG with a transparent layer so that only the flower pixels would show through. But these are all things that can be solved. In other this is not the crucial component here. Now, I do have something else going on, which is that, oh, each bubble had a diameter variable, which was controlling its size. So why not use diameter? diameter to be the width and height, and let me comment out. Uh, and now I have, look at this, I have my two flowers floating up. And now, now I'm lucky because these aren't overlapping, so I don't really see uh, I don't really see those hard edges anymore. Of course, if they were to overlap, if I were to go back to this part of the program and start them uh, kind of closer to each other, you can see that I'm seeing this problem. So, this, you know, I don't want to spend too much time with this because for me, again, the, the, the exciting, interesting stuff is when we're going to start looking at the pixels of an image and how do we make up our own images and, and mix the pixels around and, do, and invent our own image processing algorithms. But this is something you might take some time to play with and practice. For example, go and find yourself an image with some transparency. Maybe just try, actually, you know, a quick and dirty solution might be um, that uh, I'm just going to give it a tint with uh, keeping uh, the color at full, but give it some alpha. And let me go back and uh, put them closer to each other again. You know, not great, but a little bit better. At least they're kind of like semi-blended together. But that's not such a great solution. But <laughs> I don't know why I bothered to show that to you. But um, uh, I, don't, I want it to be back to what it was. Um, so uh, some other things you might think about doing are give the objects uh, color so that you can tint them differently. Could you apply translate and rotate to the image so the flowers spin perhaps? That would be an interesting thing to try. Um, another thing you might think about is I got kind of lucky. If I go and look at my uh, flower, 
Uh, my flower happens to be, if I find the resolution, right there, it happens to be a perfect square. It's 300 by 300. <laughs> um, so this was kind of lucky in that in my code, when I changed the size of the flower, I could just change the width and height to be the same value. But what if you had an image that you needed to keep the ratio of the width and height the same? How might you change uh, the size? Uh, uh, might have different images larger and smaller with, but keeping that, uh, that core resolution intact to give you a secret you might be able to, not a secret, but you, know, you can get the width, oh sorry, you can get the width of that image by saying the name of the image dot width. So one thing I could do is say flower dot width times 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.7. I guess I'm giving you the solution. But give that a try and see what happens there. The other thing that I think is a really key element, and, and maybe um, I should make a video actually just about this, but we really did something which is a bit of a problem that I think I should point out. This p image flower is a global variable. And the bubble object is just accessing that global variable. And, and actually, you know what? The next video I have in mind to, uh, to looking at this, so we'll, we'll, we're going to bring that back into the next video. This is perfect. So the next video will solve this problem. But really, what if I want, I want a whole lot of different flowers? And every time I make a bubble, I make it with a random flower image. I can't just have a global variable flower that the image just kind of happens to be getting when it's time to draw itself. I need each object to store perhaps its own image. Each object should know which image is it displaying. And how could you solve that problem? That might be something you give yourself a little try to. And um, in the next video, which I want to talk about having an array of images, uh, we'll look at a solution to this. <laughs> OK. Um, this wasn't so bad. I think this was OK. Eh, it could be better. But uh, that's what it is. OK. I'm going to turn this off. And I got to go. I got to go. You got to do the next one. I don't have a lot of time here. OK. <laughs>